Welcome to Saturday Showcase, presented by Five Hour Energy. Here at the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, the Tar Heels, already 2-0 with a couple of road wins in league play, take on the visiting Louisville Cardinals here this afternoon. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. And this is just the beginning of a great day and evening of college basketball action here on ESPN. Next up, number one Duke Zion Williamson down in Tallahassee to take on Florida State. Then it's Diedrich Lawson in Kansas against Baylor. And finally, Grant Williams and the number three Tennessee Volunteers are in Gainesville to take on the Gators. Great day and night of college basketball. Glad you're with us, Dan Schulman, Jay Billis. We're going to see a Louisville team trying to bounce back from an overtime loss at Pitt. And we're going to see two of the most talented offensive players in the ACC. You know, starting with North Carolina's Cam Johnson, who transferred in from Pittsburgh as a grad transfer. Last year he had a terrific year. He can really shoot it. He's 6'8". He can see over the top of you and shoot over the top of you. But he's leading the ACC in three-point field goal percentage, shooting just under 50%. He's made 39 threes on the year, and he's healthy now. Moving better, rebounding better, better on defense. And his counterpart for Louisville, Jordan Wara, just a sophomore, averaging 17 points per game, and he can go off on you for 25 at any time. Very strong, an excellent guard rebounder, but coming off his worst performance of the season against Pittsburgh, went 2 of 14. Jordan Wara has to play well for Louisville to pull the upset here in Chapel Hill. And standing by with Maria Taylor is Louisville coach Chris Mack. All right, coach, it's your first game as a head coach against UNC. you got to guard the fourth best offense in the nation. How do you contain it? Uh, we need six or seven players out there. No, they're, uh, they're talent. we got to get back in transition, control those things, our decisions on offense, not leading to easy runouts for them, and obviously got to keep them off the glass. Thanks for your time. Well, they did not guard very well Wednesday night at Pitt. A much improved Pitt team, by the way, under Jeff Capel, but an overtime loss to Pitt, 89-86. And the one thing they struggled with the most defensively, Jay, was stopping the dribble drive, stopping penetration. And we'll see how they fare against Carolina. The Heels, as we mentioned, already 2-0 in Italy play with both wins on the road. And aren't road wins in conference play precious in college basketball? Underway with a tip belonging to the Heels. Immediately, North Carolina goes inside. They're an inside-out team. But how great is it to be back in ACC conference play and then to have Maria Taylor back in the beautiful game? She, no more of this sadistic ground acquisition game that's played outdoors in horrible conditions. You are inside watching the beautiful game. And she takes us to another level as well, just by her presence here on this crew. Here's Malik Williams. Big guy can shoot the three. Got to respect it from outside. He turns it over, though, to May. Terrific job by Kobe White to come over from the weak side and stop that drive. That led to the turnover. Kobe White has scored 41 points in his last two games. High low with the big guys, and Garrison Brooks lays it in. Mismatch inside, Quan Ford right on Brooks, trying to sit on his legs, and they just threw over the top. Couldn't get enough pressure on the ball to stop that pass. And a terrific job by Garrison Brooks to hold off Quan Ford and let the ball go over the top of him instead of pushing off. How good has Garrison Brooks been the last couple of games? Scoring, rebounding, blocks, and maybe most notably, 10 assists and no turnovers in the Heels' last two games. And he's an excellent defender. You know, oftentimes you talk about Garrison Brooks being a position defender, but that doesn't give him credit for being the athlete that he is. But he has a great feel for defense, both inside and as a help defender. What a good look for Dwayne Sutton to tie the game and now Kobe White turns it over and then commits a foul. Of course when you play Carolina you're always worried about how fast they play, how good they are at the offensive end and you see a lot of solid numbers for Roy Williams team. You're going to have a lot of possessions when you play against North Carolina. They push the ball up after a make, they push it up after a miss, they push it up sideline after a free throw. I mean this is just a team that is relentless in coming at you and you have to rebound on every possession against North Carolina. But really the key I think Dan for Louisville is run good offense. That's going to help their help their transition defense and make Carolina take it out of the net like Jordan Wara just did. Wara coming off just a 2 for 14 game against Pitt on Wednesday, but he's having out an outstanding season. His scoring is up better than 11 points per game from last year. Started off guarding Luke May down low, switched off onto Brooks. May misses the 3. And the rebound down to Sutton, who's kind of ja a jack-of-all-trades for Louisville. 
Carolina's coming off a nice road win Tuesday night in Raleigh against NC State, 90-82 in a frenetic game. And we get another Carolina foul. Boy, Carolina had Kristen Cunningham trapped in the corner. I mean, the deep coffin corner, and he threw up a lame duck pass that Garrison Brooks should have taken the other way. I mean, he's tra watch how he gets trapped over here by Kobe White and then Luke May. And that pass needed to be taken away by Brooks and knocked the other way for a, an easy layup. Instead, Brooks wound up getting a foul because he didn't get the steal. One of Carolina's best defenders, Kenny Williams, drawing the assignment of Christian Cunningham, the grad transfer from Sanford, who has been outstanding for the Cardinals in recent games. Good pass. And Sutton will lay it in. The Carolina bench was screaming for a traveling call. I yeah, thought they got a walk, but what a great start for Louisville at both ends of the floor. They did not play as hard as they're capable of playing when they played against Pittsburgh, and they are playing much harder in this one. That cures a lot of ills. Kobe White with his second turnover already. Cunningham lays it in, and the second foul committed by Kobe White already. This may be blasphemy, but that uh, that conjured up a little bit of an image of what Kenny Smith used to do in this in this building, taking it in transition and then spinning around and getting the defender off balance. That was nowhere near as quick or as good as Kenny Smith. I'm not suggesting that, but just conjured up that image and Kobe White picking up the foul because he wasn't in great defensive position to start with. And what does it do to a team, Jay, when their starting point guard goes to the bench two and a half minutes into the game? Well, it's not helpful, but Seventh Woods is capable. And he's not played well of late. It's been a little bit of a confidence shaker for him. He had a great game against Gonzaga. He scored 14 points, but he's only scored 11 points since then. First touch for Cam Johnson, and he'll head to the free throw line. Boy, for Carolina fans, it was an anxious moment when Johnson went down and grabbed his right knee in the game against NC State on Tuesday. It turned out to be cramping. It kept him out for the last 12 minutes of the game, but fortunately for the heels, just cramping, and he apparently is fine and obviously back in there to start today. Here's a look at Tuesday. You didn't see a lot of big contact, but whenever you see a young man reach for the general area of his knee, you fear for the worst, but it turned out to be a cramp below the knee. And didn't come back in. No. He went out at the, what, the 12.48 mark, whatever it was, never came back in. Looks pretty good right there. That's just a beautiful cut to the basket by Cam Johnson. Moving intelligently without the ball. When you talk about moving without the ball, that's one thing. But moving intelligently without the ball is exactly what Cam Johnson did on that cut. Williams wants a touch in the post, can't get it, so it's Sutton switching hands. And a nice left-handed lay-in to increase the lead to six. Beautiful finish. Sutton already with seven, three and a half minutes into the game. Good pass. May goes around the defender, misses the shot. Almost like he was anticipating contact. Can't get an easier one. Boy, Cunningham with a very quick crossover. Now back out to four, who has replaced Darius Perry in the starting lineup for the Cards the last couple of games. Boy, Cunningham is such a poised player. Williams rattles home a three. And as we mentioned earlier, the big man not afraid to shoot the three for Louisville. Well, that's what he does. Had 19 points and 11 rebounds in the game against Miami. You just need to get him in space where he's most effective. Malik Williams does not like to play the physical game. He's got to get better at that. Louisville hasn't missed a shot, Jay. Six for six from the field. And I'm sure Roy Williams is going to let his team know that at the next time out. Make it seven for seven, and Wara is hot in the early going as well. Just a simple catch and shoot, and Luke May didn't recover with a hand up to make him put the ball on the floor. That was effortless for Jordan Wara. I think that 2 of 14 against Pitt is way in the rearview mirror for him. Brooks into May. And a foul committed to by Williams. But about five minutes in, what a start on the road for the Louisville Cardinals. They have not missed a shot. Seven for seven from the field, knocking down twos and threes, and already leading by ten. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%.
Chapel Hill, time to take a look at today's player resume brought to you by, indeed, Jordan Wara. Last season as a freshman, basically in a backup role, playing behind guys like Spalding and Adele, a much older Louisville team. But now stepping into his own this year as a sophomore, 17.3 points per game with more on Wara. Here's Maria Taylor. Well, Dan, Wara worked really hard in the offseason to become more than just a shooter. He said he wanted to be a scorer, so he worked on that mid-range game and pull-ups. And he said a lot of help from Dino Gaudio has gotten him more efficient. He would videotape him from five different spots on the court and show him what he's doing wrong. And a lot of it had to do with his release point. It would get low at certain times. Now, another focus he's had, though, this season is playing better defense. Dino showed him the top 30 small and power forwards in the NBA. And he went down the list and said, how many of these guys can you guard? And right now, Jordan says he can't guard any of them. So that's been a focus for him to improve on this season in ACC play. You know, one of the things, Maria, also that Jordan Wara has done is he's eliminated some of the extra frosting that he puts on plays. He's not playing with the ball as much. And you've noticed just in the, the start of this game, when he catches it, he is catching it to shoot, not catching it ready to shoot, because you're never going to be more open than when you first catch the ball. So he, he's, he's prepared fully when he first catches it right now. Good defense there by Carolina to force a tie-up. The arrow will still keep it with Louisville, but obviously the next time Carolina will get it on the arrow. V.J. King has come into the game for the cards. We see Nasir Little in the game for the first time for Carolina, coming off a 19-minute 2.2 rebound a stat sheet against State on Tuesday night. Little still trying to find his role with his Carolina team. Well, he's thinking a lot right now instead of just playing. He's going to be an outstanding player. He's a great talent. Boy, that last possession, Louisville just not prepared mentally for the trap that they might see. And the traps are random. You don't know when Roy Williams is going to throw one at you, so you always have to be prepared for it. That's their first missed field goal of the game. Now seven for eight from the floor. May, nice look. Woods wide open for three. Around and out. Kept alive by May, but we get a foul on the floor going against Louisville. And it looks like V.J. King gets whistled for the foul. Chris Mack, his first year as head coach at Louisville after an out outstanding run at Xavier. So he moves from the Big East to the ACC. And now we may have... Uh, a little action underneath the basket, whether it's a hook and hold or whether they're looking for something potentially untoward as the officials, Mike Eads and Tony Henderson in this case, are going to go to the monitor. Yeah, that's a point of emphasis this year. The hook and hold is going to be called on every occasion. And you can see right, right there, that's what will be called a hook and hold. And this one's going to go against Louisville. So initially, see so what VJ King underneath just hooks on to Nasir Little. Now that's a, that's a hook and hold play. That's going to be a flagrant one on VJ King. That's an automatic, and it, it is not open to interpretation by the officials. Once they see it and confirm it on the replay, that's going to be a flagrant one on Louisville. Wow, they call that a common foul. And Mike Eads walking over in our direction saying they're going to leave it as a common foul, which well, I'm glad they did. I think that's that's the right result. But they, they, they've been told hook and hold is a flagrant one and no, no question about it. And that looked like a hook and hold to me. He just grabbed onto his arm that way. This is something you're now starting to see once or twice every game, this kind of a play that they and again, the officials are doing what they're told to do by going to the monitor. Little with a pull up from 15, too strong and a good rebound in traffic by Enoch. The transfer from UConn, who the last couple of games has been coming off the bench. Pretty nice combo on the inside for Louisville between Williams and Enoch. Well, Enoch's an NBA talent. Athletic, here's the high-low. Good, good post-up by Enoch. And uses the left hand to extend the lead to 10. Just out of a little box set. Screen across, and then the high-low. Really pretty. And when Stephen Enoch watches or walks into a gym, even if you don't know who anybody is, he's noticeable. You look at him and you say, man, that is a big, strong dude. Started off at UConn, and he's got the ability to play at the next level because he's, a, he's an elite big man shooter. And you see down low, he gets Luke May right on his hip and goes right to that right shoulder because he had him on that side of him. So went ahead, went away from the contact with the beautiful little jump hook in the lane. You get that close to the bucket with two feet in the paint, that's going to be a score, a foul, or both every single time. And that shows 
you know, North Carolina has a little bit of an issue protecting the rim and scoring around the rim. And that's usually not an issue given the, the quality of big man that Roy Williams is able to put on the floor. Luke Mays on Enoch now, though Brooks is getting ready to check back in. Carolina again is without Sterling Manley out for the fourth game in a row with a sore knee. But Dwayne Sutton had a wide open three there. Woods trying for the reverse, won't go down, but tip back out by May. That's Carolina basketball right now if you're, uh, of all time. If you cannot grab the rebound, tip it back out to somebody who can get it. Wow, somehow that pass from May found a cutting seventh Woods, and he makes a shot with a high degree of difficulty. Third on the team in assists with 41. He has got great speed and outstanding athlete. The only thing seventh Woods does not do is shoot the ball. Cunningham with a penetration. That ball is deflected by Carolina. It'll be out of bounds back to Louisville. One thing you always have to be alert to when you play North Carolina is they're going to tip the ball back out. Now watch Luke May. He pushes his man underneath, can't grab the rebound, but he tips it back out. And if Louisville's alert to that, they can take it the other way and turn it into offense for themselves. And a terrific job body-seeking by Seventh Woods and still keeping his eyes on the rim. Your eyes make layups, never took him off the rim. Woods will get a breather. Jay, look at what Carolina has on the court right now with White having foul trouble and Johnson and May just went to the bench. You've got Andrew Playtech, Brandon Robinson, Leaky Black, Nasir Little, and Garrison Brooks. Interesting lineup for Carolina. Probably not a group that Roy Williams has ever used this season. Maybe not, but Roy Williams is going to use his bench and he's going to try to get into your bench. And if you're not going to go to be your bench, he's going to wear out your starters and try to foul out your starters. Wara has returned for Louisville. Pull-up jumper, Leaky Black. This kid is going to be special here at North Carolina. Now, he's not putting up big-time numbers right now, as you might expect for some big-time freshman. But I'm telling you, Leaky Black is talented. He, he can impact the game at both ends of the floor. He's going to be outstanding. 6'7 as well. Got a lot of size and length to him. Carolina's gotten back within six. Good ball pressure. Enoch launches a three and the big man will knock it down for Enoch is fourth three in ten attempts this year. We're talking about an elite shooting touch for a big man. You just saw it right there. I mean how many guys 6'10 or better are going to knock down that shot with that level of ease. Timeout on the floor with Louisville leading Carolina by nine. When we come back, Jay Billis going 94 feet with Kobe White. What an honor for Kobe White. Can you believe it? Just a freshman with this kind of honor. 94 feet with North Carolina's Kobe White. Where does the name Kobe come from? My middle name is Jacoby, so. What's your first name? Alec. Alec. Well, Alec's a good name. Should have been stick with that, too. Uh, what do you like to do outside of basketball? I uh, listen to music or hang with my roommates. And how many roommates do you have? Three. Now, are they neat roommates or kind of messy roommates? Uh, one is neat. Other two are kind of iffy. What, what, now, where do you fall on that list? I'm the neat one. I'm you're, neat. The, you're the neat one. All right, what's it like playing point guard for Roy Williams? Uh, it's hard. It's hard to adjust to, but once you get used to it, you know, it becomes easier. What's the hardest part? Just being him on the court. And how about the hair? Like, I'm jealous of that. Uh, why did you go from the big fro down to this? I wanted something new. I got tired of looking at the fro in the mirror every day. It was a national treasure. 94 <laughs> feet. Must be nice to have choices, which Kobe White definitely has. Unfortunately for him, on the bench right now with a couple of fouls. Picked him up in the first two and a half minutes of the game. North Carolina's got to put a little more resistance. The steal by Leaky Black. Couldn't finish it, got around the defender, but couldn't lay it in. Just been too easy for Louisville. They're getting open shot after open shot, offensive rebound. I mean, Roy Williams has to be miffed that his team is giving up over 70% from the floor and over 70% from three in this game. And now, look, a lot of North Carolina's speed has been on the bench with Kobe White out with those two fouls. But they, they can do a better job guarding. This has not been a good effort so far for North Carolina defensively. Dwayne Sutton, one of the underrated players, in my opinion, in this conference, already has nine points, two rebounds, and two assists in this game for Louisville. And Roy Williams will show his dis displeasure, Jay, by bringing in four players at the next whistle. Right now, Jordan Wara being guarded by Nasir Little. And I think Louisville's got to look to Wara. Brandon Robinson called for the foul. 
Let's go back to the hook and hold play that we saw before the last time out. Mike Eads, one of the best in the business, came over and talked to us during the break and said the reason they left it at a, as a common foul is they didn't feel like King, and he used the word clamped down on Little. Yeah, yes, he did. You know, hook his arm around him. That's the common. But they feel if he really locks that arm on him, then that's when they'll elevate it to a flagrant one. Yeah, and I liked I liked the way they called it. It was just I was under the impression that there was no choice in the matter uh, for the officials. But but I'm glad that severity uh, of the hook and hold was taken into account because I, I, I've always felt like that's just rebounding. A lot of this hook and hold thing came from the fact that Isaac Haas last year at Purdue broke his arm in a hook and hold play. Good pass. And May misses his second one right around the bucket today. Boy, shots you never see Luke May miss. Well, that's what Roy Williams was talking to us about yesterday is North Carolina's relative inability to score around the rim and to defend the rim on the defensive end. Luke May doesn't miss these very often. He's already missed a couple of those in this early going. May named a mid-season Wooden Award candidate. 25 names on the list, five of them out of the ACC. Nikhil Alexander-Walker from Virginia Tech, DeAndre Hunter from Virginia, Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett from Duke, and Luke May from Carolina. Boy, Zion made it. That's it. <laughs> you know who didn't make it from the ACC that surprised me? I thought Kyle Guy would yeah. be on that list. And I'll tell you, there's one guy on that list that everybody in America needs to watch for, and that's Ja Morant at Murray State. That dude is legit. He's going to be a top five pick in the draft. He is Russell Westbrook. Kenny Williams with a strong drive, and he is called for the foul. How about next week? Virginia is at Cameron to take on Duke. How good of a game does that figure to be? Well, two of the best defensive teams in the country, and Virginia has been a great defensive team for a number of years now. And, you know, we talk about Michigan having won, what, 29 of their last 30 or whatever it is going back to last year. That's not far off of what Virginia is as well. I mean, Virginia's undefeated on the season. Uh, I know they lost that game in the NCAA tournament, uh, the first one to ever lose to a 16. That's going to follow them around for a long, long time in the narrative. But, but they are legit again. Is there anybody in the country, Jay, who uses screens and comes off a screen and squares up to the basket to make a shot as well as Kyle Guy does? No, no. Kyle Guy is a great offensive player. Enoch back into the game after the second foul on Malik Williams. Louisville leading by seven. Great. Ryan McMahon inside and another bucket for Enoch. What a great shot fake by Ryan McMahon. You know, he's got such a great perimeter shot. He's got shot credibility. So if he gives a little shot fake, he can put it on the deck. Got in the lane and was able to dish that ball off. That was just big-time offense by Ryan, by, uh, Ryan McMahon. And has diversified his game, right, doing this more than he did the last couple of years? Well, he has to because teams are taking away that three-point shot. Kenny Williams just, he does such a great job of closing out, and then but the putting it on the deck draws the defender Garrison Brooks. Nobody rotated over fast enough and in order to get a steal, get a deflection, and when Stephen Enoch catches that against 7th Woods inside, that's an easy score for a big guy. Kobe White back into the game for Carolina. Sat about the last eight or eight and a half minutes after picking up two early fouls. Got to have him back on the floor. You might want to keep him on the bench so he doesn't pick up his third. But they got to put some points on the board. He's their speed. Johnson for three. Right now, North Carolina doesn't seem to have a lot of rhythm. And I think it's because they haven't established any rhythm with their defense. You know, rhythm is a, you get a defensive rhythm too. And you got to give Louisville a lot of credit. They've been excellent. Deep one for McMahon. He drove the first time, and then nobody gets a hand up. Kenny Williams is a, an outstanding perimeter defender, but he's going against a guy who's a great three-point shooter, stands still, and doesn't get a hand up. Johnson trying to post Cunningham, got a big height advantage, and he's called for the travel. Now, Louisville has been outstanding. They've responded from a poor performance against Pittsburgh up in the peat but if you're looking at it from a North Carolina perspective I think North Carolina's got to be very disappointed in the way they have come out especially on the defensive end in this one I think the, the Tar Heels are capable of much better than they've shown in this you know both coaches as we talked to them yesterday and this is the case with just about every coach they feel their team is inconsistent you get a great performance one game not so great the next game 
And both claiming even now that we're here in January, they don't know what quite what to expect from their team sometimes. Yeah, and Roy Williams had talked about some of the inconsistency has come from inconsistent effort. And, and one thing you've always heard from Roy Williams, he says, I shouldn't have to coach effort. And I think he's had to coach it a little bit this year. Now, it, it's not that the players aren't great guys. They are. But it's, it's just the inconsistency. One, one time you'll get a great effort, and then less than that the next. Good high, low. That's beautiful. Whoa. Sutton with the assist, and Enoch having himself an afternoon already. He's got nine. And when you don't get pressure on the ball, they can pick you apart. Right now, Louisville putting on an offensive clinic. Ryan McMahon putting it on the deck, then catch and shoot. Making two big plays. Hand down, what is uh, they say? Hand down, man down. Is that, that's not trademarked, is it? That's, I think that just cost me some money. We'll, we'll High low. During the break. FOMO. Anxiety over missing out on something exciting. Something big. I'm like, oh God. Oh, oh Don't miss Zion. Do something big. And Zion Williamson Duke coming your way next in Tallahassee against Leonard Hamilton's Florida State Seminoles. 68%. Is that all from the field? Of course, a lot of high percentage looks, a lot of dunks, but Zion Williamson and correctly so saying, I don't want to be known as just a dunker. And he shouldn't be known as just a dunker. And RJ Barrett scoring better than 20 points per game. A couple of Wendy's wooden watch candidates on the Duke Blue Devils. And you can see them next against Florida State. Well, he is way more than a dunker. I mean, he's excellent, yeah, excellent shot blocker, terrific rebounder, offensive rebounder. But he could eliminate all this dunker talk by just laying it in. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be half the fun. Look, just use the backboard, lay it in. Count for two <laughs> points. I don't know what the big deal is. Little screen for the screener action. Well defended, but a terrific shot by Kenny Williams. He needed that to go. He's been struggling a little bit seeing the ball go through the basket. He's such a good shooter. Cunningham driving on Kobe White, and White basically has to let him go because he's got two fouls. And Kristen Cunningham knows that. The transfer from Sanford, the grad transfer. And then Kristen Cunningham is having a terrific grad year. Well, Chris Mack just loves him, says he's a great kid, great teammate, and you know they think a lot of him because he just showed up this year as a grad transfer, and he's a co-captain for Louisville as Luke May gets him going a little bit here with a three. That's Carolina's first three of the game. Yeah, they were 0 for 5 before that. But Cunningham coming off a 23.5 assist game against Pittsburgh. Good pass. Oh, and Enoch fumbled it, or he had an easy two. Might want to just bring that down instead of trying to complete the play up top. Big possession for Carolina. Get this under double digits, because the heels have not played well. White, no. Heels on the glass, but coming down with it is Sutton. If you can hold your own defending the glass against Carolina, that's a... Uh, that goes a long way towards having a chance to win a game. Yeah, Carolina, a very good rebounding team. Not as good of an offensive rebounding team as they've been, but still very good. Top 25 in the country at getting their own misses. Got Brooks on the bench right now with two fouls, so playing a smaller lineup with Luke May at the five. Shot clock down to three. McMahon forces it up, and it comes down to Carolina. Great defense by Kenny Williams. Good ball reversal. White again for three. Kristen Cunningham needs to go right after Kobe White. He's got those two fouls. He's a freshman. And Chris Mack wants a timeout. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. The Cardinals continue to lead on the road. Well, Louisville is off to a great start in this game, primarily because of the ball movement and wide open three-point shots. Catch and shoot opportunities, not having to put it on the deck, just able to get right into a shot. Jordan Warren knocked a couple down. You saw Ryan McMahon hit one. Steven Enoch out of the double team, the 6'10 center from the transferred in from UConn. You know, not even a hand up on Ryan McMahon. And the Tar Heels have to do a better job defensively against this Louisville offense. 
Cardinals sharing the ball very well. Ten assists on their 14 made field goals. Out of the timeout, Kobe White back to the bench for Carolina. Cunningham has to adjust in midair, and it will go. Got it with the left hand as well. and He's just fully in charge of what Louisville is doing and what he's doing with the ball. And right now, I mean, Louisville hasn't had to turn their back one time because of pressure. Not one time. And Sear Little way long on a corner three. Louisville with the ball and a 13-point lead. Good pass. Wara rejected by May. Luke May with the block. Looked like he got that with his left hand. Nope, he got he reached over with his right hand and got it. That's a that's a terrific block. Looked like he might have come. If you're going to go with your right hand, you can come across that arm pretty easily. Cam Johnson back into the game for Carolina. Little to the bench. Not this time for Wara, and we get a foul underneath, I think, on Cam Johnson to the heels, trying to secure the rebound. He might have had an arm around Malik Williams because Malik Williams was just rooting him out. And unless his right arm was around him, I don't know what else Cam Johnson could have done there. You see, yeah, see, he's got him locked up. That's what it was. Perry. Williams with the offensive rebound and right back to the glass to extend the lead to 15. What a play by Malik Williams. That's the kind of tough play that I think Chris Mack wants to see him make where he's physical and attacking and he's not just a three-point shooter. Good fake. Laura misses the three. Williams and May both got a hand on it. For those who maybe didn't see a lot of Xavier, don't know that much about Chris Mack. When he gets it to go in the way that he wants, what are what's the identity of a Chris Mack team? Well, they're going to be tough defensively, and they play a pack line defense. But a pack, you know, the pack line has gotten this reputation that somehow it's a slow, it slows the game down. It doesn't. It's just where your help is positioned and, and how you're going to defend principle wise. He wants to get up and down the court and play fast, and they do that. I mean, they, they score a ton of points, and they'll score even more as their talent level rises back up. But I, I really like the way Louisville plays, and they, they've got, they, they're getting better and better. A lot of transfers who have really helped out the program this year, three grad transfers. Next year, they've got the second-ranked recruiting class in the country coming in. What a block. It's called goaltending. Darius Perry in disbelief. He thought he got it clean. I don't know that that actually hit the backboard first. I thought it hit the backboard second. That's a good block. Yep. Yeah, that's a that's a bad call. But but a tough call. I mean, those aren't easy, but that, that was ball first. That, that was a great block. And just a, a missed call. Four minutes left in the first half. Louisville has had a double-digit lead for most of this game. And actually, it should be more. They've missed some layups and wide-open shots. I mean, this could be worse. Perry misses the three, and another rebound for May, who leads the ACC at 10 boards per game. Most of those on the defensive end. He averages over seven defensive rebounds a game. And Carolina get Cameron Johnson to go. He dumps it down to May. Extra look to Williams. Open three. Pretty basketball. Uh, Williams got the first jump shot to go down, which was contested. And that was a rhythm three. The loudest the building has been today. Look at the position for Enoch. And count that bucket. That's Brandon Huffman, the sophomore from Goldsboro, North Carolina. Doesn't get a whole lot of time. Roy Williams thought that one was clean. Well, Louisville went right after Huffman, and Enoch was able to post him up down low. That block looked just as good as the other one on the other end, but it might have hit the, the backboard first. Another good block. Everybody's even. It is so great. Two of the nicest guys in the world in that trio. And I'm so glad Seth Greenberg could join them. Also picture. We'll be back to them at halftime. North Carolina trying to go inside to Brandon Huffman right out of the timeout. Huffman with that big body. If he can provide some minutes with Sterling Manley out, out with an injury. That's just an added bonus for North Carolina. Run the floor, defend the paint, 
rebound, and finish plays. Well, we found out in a game earlier this year that Roy Williams does not like looking at the score in the first half. And this new scoreboard, which is in a panel right in front of us, is directly across from Coach Williams. But he told us he does everything in his power to ignore the score in the first half. Is that possible when you're down by 10 on your home court? He can probably feel what the score is in the first half. I just found that interesting. And, you know, right now, North Carolina down 10. You know, this is a big... Two and a half minutes going to halftime. If they can cut into this lead, you know, that would be a, a deflating thing for Louisville going into halftime. Wow, another three. That is the seventh made three-pointer for Louisville already in this game. Boy, and a big one for Darius Perry. And he's been struggling of late. Coaching staff trying to work on him or work with him to you know, hit more singles and doubles. Don't, don't worry about hitting home runs. You know, make the easy play. May the miss at the other end. And Sutton having a big half brings down the rebound. He is such a good guard rebounder. I mean, how good was UNC Asheville when he was there? Yeah, he was with Andrew Rousey at UNC Asheville. A big time scorer that just graduated last year from Marquette. Enoch working hard trying to get the ball down to the post. Instead it's Sutton for three in and out. Louisville's done a pretty nice job. Now, making shots helps, but a pretty nice job keeping Carolina out of transition. Yes. And that's because, for the most part, they want run really good offense. They're not turning the ball over. Louisville's offense has really helped its defense, not, not putting a, uh, Carolina in a position to play ahead of the Louisville defense. Huffman with a rebound and a chance for three. Just that size under the basket going after the ball. Brandon Huffman, nobody boxed him out. He went up for it, then went up strong, finished the play with his left hand, and was able to shield off any sort of block shot with the rim. And Darius Perry really had no chance. Huffman, their third string five man. Brooks is on the bench with two fouls. Manley's out with a sore knee. So Huffman getting some big minutes here right now for Carolina. And as you said, he can match up size-wise with Eno. And Carolina picking it up without Kobe White on the floor with those two fouls. Cunningham, not a lot of room in there, and he turns it over. What a big Monday doubleheader we've got coming your way. First, it is Syracuse at Cameron to take on Duke, 7 o'clock Eastern time, and then off to Allen Fieldhouse, Texas, and Kansas at 9. Both games also available on the ESPN app. I'm just interested to see what kind of defense that Syracuse is going to play. <laughs> I'm guessing 2-3 zone. It's astute analysis, as always. I'm telling you. Cameron Johnson. Boy, do they need some threes to go down. How about Kristen Cunningham knocking that ball away so that Perry could get it. Johnson with a rejection, but stepping out of bounds, or the ball was out of bounds off Carolina. It'll go back to Louisville, but a terrific play by Cameron Johnson. Blocked right out of his hand. Ball hit out of bounds before it was picked up by Seventh Woods. Good call. Ryan McMahon back into the game now for Louisville. He's knocked down one three today. Wara has returned as well. McMahon always has to be a priority in out of bounds situations. Junior out of Sarasota, Florida. They're trying to get the shot clock straightened out. There should be no reset. Big ovation for Huffman. Boy, really good minutes by Brandon Huffman when he came into the ball game at both ends of the floor. Yeah, there should not have been a change of possession, so the shot clock shouldn't be at 30, you wouldn't think, right? No, they're gonna they're, they're resetting it. Yeah. And it's at 26 right now, so we're good to go. And now it's going to turn it over to Carolina. Little screen for the screener action. McMahon set it for the big guy. Then he got a screen. And Kenny Williams not only read it, but defended it perfectly. Jumping out off of Wara, 
and right out there to contest that pass, forcing the turnover. That's excellent defense and awareness by Kenny Williams. You don't see it often at the college level. Would you like to see two for one from Carolina here? Heck yeah. I think every opportunity. And Roy Williams wants to see it too. And Johnson will lay it in. A quick score for the Heels. But Louisville can still hold for the final shot of the half. Biggest lead for Louisville was 15. It's nine right now in the closing seconds of the first half. Louisville going to hold it for the last shot. Try to get something off with a couple of seconds left so they can get perhaps a tip in. Cunningham can't turn the corner down to five seconds. Got away with a walk there. And a push is called on 7th Woods on Perry out near midcourt. And that's going to be a one and one That's the seventh team foul. I thought that Perry got away with the walk. I thought when he caught that ball, he didn't get it down before his feet were moving and shuffling. And I thought that was a, a travel. But the referees probably thought he didn't have full control of it. He might have been bobbling it a little bit. And not the result Roy Williams was hoping for with just 1.6 seconds left in the half. Louisville leads for the entire 20 minutes by as many as 15. It's nine at the half as they look to pull off an upset here on the road in Chapel Hill. 55% from the field. Knocking down threes as well. They got seven of eight threes in the first half. And it's a nine-point lead for the Cardinals. Maria Taylor is with Chris Mack. Coach, you led this by as many as 15 points. How do you compare the way you started the half with the way you finished it? Well, we're playing one of the best teams in the country. I mean, if you're going to micromanage every second and analyze every second, then there's going to be some times where the, the blue team puts the ball in the hole. But I thought um, it would have been nice to hit those free throws at the end. But, um, I mean, what am I going to complain about? Our guys are playing their tails off. I think we're the harder playing team. Um, can we be that team coming out of halftime? You hit seven threes, so what's working well on offense right now? Well, I think we've really been patient, and I also would think that uh, as you watch our, our team, we're not just relying on the three. I mean, we've had several uh, baskets around the, uh, around the basket. Stephen Enoch did a terrific job, established himself down low, and just having that chemistry between our, our perimeter players and our post players. All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. A really good 20 minutes for the Cardinals. They're up by nine. We'll head to the studio for the Dodge Halftime Report after these messages. Rebound. Is the moment you truly all been waiting for? Welcome back to Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. What a good 20 minutes for the Louisville Cardinals here in Chapel Hill. Stephen Enoch was huge inside. 11 points to lead the way for the Cards. And Louisville also knocked down seven threes in the first half. Two of the big reasons why they enjoy a nine-point lead heading to the second half. Louisville trying to bounce back from a road loss in overtime at Pitt. They're up nine on North Carolina. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Maria Taylor. In a moment, what would you like about Louisville in the first half? Well, Louisville came out in attack mode after their loss at Pittsburgh where they didn't feel they played as hard as they needed to play in order to win a, a game in the ACC on the road. Uh, you heard Chris Mack say it to Maria Taylor right after uh, the halftime buzzer went off. They were the harder playing team. And look, we can get all technical about what North Carolina didn't do. What they didn't do is play as hard as they normally play. And that's the that's the baseline. If, if North Carolina doesn't play any harder than they did in the first half, they're going to have the same result in the second half. I think you'll see a harder playing North Carolina come out in the second. Moments ago, Maria Taylor spoke with Roy Williams. All right, Coach, Louisville shot over 50%. What do you feel is missing from your defense right now? That we didn't play it. Uh, you know, you can't stand there and let somebody shoot the ball right in your face when you can't let together. The biggest guy get it two inches from the basket. We've got to play better defensively, and hopefully we'll share the ball a little bit and not shoot 37% ourselves. Your message to Kobe White after having those two early fouls and only playing six minutes? Well, two early fouls and two turnovers. I told him he's got a chance to be a great player. Let's do it today. All right, thanks, Coach. No mincing of words from the Hall of Fame coach. A good start here in the second half for Carolina. A bucket for Brooks. And you can tell he got after his team at halftime about the effort. And they started off the second half. Little side ball screen. And Garrison Brooks just split that, uh, excuse me, slipped that screen and went right to the basket for a layup. Eliminated help 
and got an easy one. And there was nothing easy in the first half for North Carolina. Kobe White with the ball played sparingly in the first half because of the foul trouble. Just six minutes of game time. Brooks corrals the pass over Williams. Missed it. Boy, and that's when you get that close to the basket. You, you can't miss the whole rim. That was a little box set, a little screen for the screener action. And they got the ball deep in the post, just got mishandled, and then a poor attempt by the rim. Williams for three. And the rebound down to Johnson. Well, Malik Williams did have a good first half. And Carolina now two for 15 from three-point range. That's the seventh rebound for Dwayne Sutton. He's been excellent. Look at that move by Wara. Doesn't get the finish, but he does get the foul. Boy, when he makes his mind up to get near the rim, it's going to be tough to stop him. Well, he's so strong. And Jordan Wara is an excellent guard rebounder. He averages like eight, eight, nine rebounds a game. He's eighth in the league in rebounding as a guard. Sophomore from Buffalo played for his dad and for the Nigerian national team in the summer in three qualifier games towards the FIBA World Championship. Scored better than 21 points per game, so a great opportunity to play against older players in a different environment. You know, his last seven games, he's averaging just under 20 points a game, just under 10 rebounds, and barely under 50% from threes. 21 of 46 coming into this game in his last seven. And how about this, Jay? That's the first made free throw of the game for Louisville, a team that gets to the line a ton. Yeah, they average making 20 free throws a game. So part of the game plan is play them defensively without fouling. Boy, good job by Kristen Cunningham on Luke May inside. And eventually a Carolina turnover. It is hard not to like just about every aspect of Kristen Cunningham's well, game. He was fronting May, and then that was just a terrible pass that was leading Luke May all the way to the corner. That was just excellent defense. He fronted, Kristen Cunningham fronted the bigger Luke May, kind of sat on his legs, couldn't throw over the top. There was pressure on the ball. And then when Kobe White got the ball, he, he, it was a really bad angle to enter the ball into the post. But look at the job he's doing. And, or excuse me, it was Garrison Brooks. That's just a bad pass. I mean, even if Luke May catches it, he's catching it going to his own corner instead of toward the basket. Malik Williams with the line for Louisville after the third foul committed by Garrison Brooks. No changes, no sign of any change being made by Roy Williams. He'll lead Brooks in and out. Louisville's just one for five from the free throw line in this game. Williams had a big day last week. 19 points, 11 rebounds, career highs in both in a comeback win over Miami in Louisville's ACC opener. Yeah, Louisville was down 15 to Miami in that game. Still was able to come back. And they were down big to Pittsburgh as well before getting that game to overtime. So I think if Louisville finds itself behind in any game, what a, another bad pass by Garrison Brooks. Malik Williams was playing way off him. He was basically sitting in Luke May's lap. That one just take, you know, either, either reverse the ball or take that thing to the basket. I mean, uh, that's passing into a double team. Quan Four was right in front, and then Malik Williams dropped down. And Chris Mack, that ball wound up in Coach Mack's hands, and he didn't want to give it up, sensing maybe a missed opportunity. They they forced a loose ball, but they didn't actually come up with it. Nasir Little back into the game for the Heels. Boy, Cam Johnson has been relatively quiet in this game. Dwayne Sutton on him right now is doing a good job. May had to alter that shot, and front rims it rebound down to Wara. Louisville has basically turned North Carolina into a half-court team. It has been a half-court game, which is exactly where you want to get Carolina. Take them out of transition and make them play five-on-five. Five. That's the chance you have to win. If it's an up-and-down game, then it's advantage Carolina. Williams did a really good job there, racing down the court, and just establishing deep position early, and Luke May had to commit the foul, his second. Both. Williams and Enoch have done a very good job of establishing the low post. They've been a presence in the lane. Louisville J picked 11th preseason in the ACC, seen as kind of a transitional rebuilding year for them as four lays it in. Uh, I assume we both agree the upside for the Cardinals is higher than 11th in this league. No question. And especially if they're going to play this hard. 
And another Carolina turnover. Just almost unprepared for the pressure. I mean, Jordan Wara came after Nasir Little, and just he was not he was not ready for it. You know, that's the difference, I think, Dan. I've said this before, but the difference in being ready to play and being ready for a fight. Now, Louisville came into this game ready for a fight from the opening tip. And I think North Carolina was going to maybe thought they were going to ease their way into this game. Maybe they thought it was going to be a little bit easier, but it has been an absolute fight. And Wara knocks down his third three of the game to extend the lead to 14. Catch and shoot, not a hand up. Nobody's making, no North Carolina player is making Louisville put the ball on the deck. And it's funny to get back to your point. Carolina definitely went into Raleigh Tuesday ready for a fight. They threw the first punch in that game against the Wolfpack and wound up holding off NC State on a number of occasions to win the game. And right now, North Carolina can't throw the ball inside. What a move. And a nice feed. And Williams fouled from behind. That whole play set up by the penetration of Cunningham. Right now, Louisville is getting into North Carolina's paint whenever they feel like it. I mean, that light blue in the middle of the floor has been owned by Louisville. Whether passing it in there or driving it in there, just blowing right by Luke May, helping up, dishing it off down low. Rotation was late. Kenny Williams, who normally is an excellent defender, late rotating. But North Carolina's had difficulty defending the rim. And then who do you throw the ball into in the low post to get a bucket? Felt like one of these games where the first four minutes of the second half was going to be tremendously important. Would Carolina come out of the locker room, you know, with their hair on fire and just playing, running, is rebounding, trying to dominate Louisville? But the Cardinals look as poised and tough in the second half as they did in the first half right now. Well, this, I think what this could, should show the Louisville team is when they come out playing hard and together, they can compete with the best teams in the country. And really, most of their losses this year have come against the top flight teams. And the loss against Pittsburgh may be a head scratcher to a lot of people, but Jeff Capel has done a really good job with that Pittsburgh program. And I'll tell you what, the, the performance that Pittsburgh got out of Trey McGowan's and Xavier Johnson, McGowan's at 33 points, Xavier Johnson 21 points, 10 assists in that game. First point of the game for White. Hard to believe a building this big could get that quiet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> It's a big building, and it's a very blue building. Blue everywhere. And they lead the country in banners, I believe. Now, when this building was first constructed in 1986, you would look up and say, how would they ever fill this thing with banners up top? And you know what? They did. Yep. A little bit of zone right now from North Carolina. Can't keep them out of the paint, so they'll put themselves in the paint. Enoch back into the game for Louisville. Sutton misses the three. Rebound Little. That was a settle. Off the leg of White, another turnover, and a run out for Wara. Lost it on the way up, but a foul is called. The lead is still 13 for Louisville. They are still shooting the ball well from outside. Jordan Wara, the leading scorer for the Cardinals on the season, has three made threes, and the Cards are still in command. like Jay Billis when you get older. Swish, he, he, got, he got a lot of swag. Uh, it's definitely a swish, I like his style. <laughs> um, hopefully Brick, just because I hope, hopefully have enough hair that I don't have to do that, but I think he rocks it pretty well. Feels like two and a half swishes and half a brick as if we need the ego to get any bigger over here. Well, he, he was, well, they're just kissing up. They just want, they just want nice things said about them, but I got to stick with him on the hair thing. He's right. Yeah. But you know what? Bald men can be attractive with the right hat. <laughs> You're lucky Chris Mack's not listening to your commentary right now. Well, I wasn't talking about him. <laughs> talking about me. Yeah. A game where Carolina led 3 to nothing, and Louisville, after they tied it, took the lead moments later. They have led the rest of the way. 
If you're just joining us, Stephen Enoch, Dwayne Sutton have both had big days for the Cardinals. Jordan War has knocked down three threes. Williams with a chance for a three-point play. Oh, a nice drive by Kenny Williams. And that's what Louisville has been dealing with is the inability to stay in front of the ball. And the defense getting broken down, compounding that with fouling at the rim and allowing the conventional three-point play. And Carolina needs to do something here in its home building to get this crowd into it because Louisville has been, and rightfully so, because they have earned it, but Louisville's been playing with a quiet building on the road because they've taken the crowd out of it. 2-3 zone for North Carolina, where it says ACC in the middle is where Louisville needs to get the ball and make a play. Been a while, as you can see, since Louisville beat a top 15 team on the road. Have lost the last 10. Long, long way to go in this one. But Louisville with an 11-point lead. Sutton the miss. King saves it. I thought he was out of bounds. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah, Couldn't okay. hear the whistle, and yeah. he is out of bounds. He was definitely out of bounds. He was right. We couldn't hear the whistle. He wasn't quite as out of bounds as Kevin Durant was the other oh night. My. Was it the second step or the third out of bounds? <laughs> that was unbelievable. He was three feet and three steps out of bounds. He was in the stands. Yep. Lob over the top. Little can't finish it for the heels. Well, a good looking play though. Lifted everybody up. Little backdoor look. Help was eliminated. Just couldn't finish. Enoch, strong move. And the arrow will keep it with Louisville. Neck ball. <laughs> we led the nation in that. <laughs> ESPN of the ACC is going to bring you the ACC Network beginning in August. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. Big day in the ACC today. Everybody but Virginia Tech, I believe, is in action today. Some games going on alongside us. Duke and Florida State coming up after us right here on ESPN later on tonight. It'll be Georgia Tech at Syracuse up at the Carrier Dome. And Syracuse is in Cameron Monday to take on Duke as Ryan McMahon knocks down a corner three. How about that? He looked like Steve Nash dribbling the ball underneath, didn't give up his dribble. And as soon as he let it go, he became a shooting guard and immediately went to the corner. North Carolina did not react to it. Little in the post right now using his strength. Good finish that time. Just a little isolation, and Lasir Little has got a ton of ability. As soon as he starts reacting instead of thinking, he is going to take off. Good effort by King to keep it alive. Cunningham comes up with a loose ball. And the finish for Enoch. Give credit there to B.J. King. He kept that ball alive, tipped it so that Kristen Cunningham could get it and then attack and make that play. When have we seen Stephen Enoch play better this year? And he is looking every bit the part of the NBA hopeful. Great play. Boy, Dwayne Sutton has been awesome in this game. That was a great play. He had legal guarding position, two feet on the floor facing the ball handler, and he moved to keep that position. Now at the other end, after V.J. King is able to tip that ball out to Cunningham, Cunningham just lobs it up to Enoch in that scramble situation. And Louisville in the second half, I'm not sure that Louisville came out harder than it did in the first half. I don't think the Cardinals did. But North Carolina didn't come out any harder than they did in the first half either. And, and that's the difference. A nine-point lead to the break. Back up to 14 right now with 13.22 to go. I think Louisville's got to look for a run and jump. Some sort of trap here. Just And Louisville gives it back to the heels. A simple pass and catch. Frustrated a little on the bench. Cameron Johnson sitting down right now for Carolina as well. Kobe White's been unable to penetrate, get to the rim as often as he normally does. Well, Cunningham's done a great job. It's been all half-court stuff. Nothing's been full court. And they're not executing in the half-court. Good pass. Ten Carolina turnovers. McMahon misses the three. Yeah, that was a 
Hey, missed shot, but that was a great shot. You're not going to get a better three for Ryan McMahon than that early in the clock and in transition. And the first foul committed by Wara. A lot of ranked teams have lost to unranked opponents this week, and we shouldn't be surprised. This is the way it is in college basketball, but there were uh, a big win for Rutgers over Ohio State. Ole Miss taking down Auburn. Maryland beat Indiana last night. Yeah, not unusual. What, what's unusual is in an unranked team beating a ranked team that Villanova was on the unranked side in yeah. beating St. John's. That, that's the, uh, the part that seems so different. But Villanova's getting better and better. May misses the 10-footer. Offensive rebound. Kenny Williams off the glass and good. Well, Kenny Williams has looked good in this game. But that's one of the first times North Carolina's had an offensive rebound bucket in this game, or at least that I can recall. A dozen now for Williams coming off a 15-point effort Tuesday in Raleigh. Little horn set. Roll replace action. Sutton with a drive. And a block is the call. Well, I thought Kristen Cunningham got away with a walk there when he switched pivot feet. A 12-point lead for Louisville and one of the big contributors off the bench has been Stephen Enoch, the transfer from UConn. UConn's always had a lot of big guys. Now Louisville has a UConn big guy. He's making an impact. Speaking of Duke, they play each other next week. And Zion Williamson coming off a 30-10-5 game at Wake Forest on Tuesday. The first ever Duke freshman to put up those numbers. The front runner for player of the year right now. I think so. I, I, I'll tell you what, though. Marcus Howard's got to yeah. be in that conversation for Marquette. <laughs> Averaging 26 a game. He is a video game. And I'll tell you what. I like, I like the fact that Adnan Burke is in the studio. But I want to know what he thinks of Green Book. Best movie I've yes, seen in a long it time. It was terrific. Adnan's our movie expert at ESPN. A little flex action run by North Carolina. And throw it away. Dwayne Sutton's been fantastic wow. in this game. He got a foul there that didn't get called. He has been fantastic. That's what, 11 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, not one turnover. And he has played spectacular defense. Again, to call him a glue guy or a jack-of-all-trades almost undersells his ability. He's a terrific player. He is way better than yeah. glue. Yep. Williams the save, Sutton the steal again. Oh, what a play by Leaky Black. But then Black... He was out of bounds yeah. and came back in, yeah. but yeah, that rat saved another bucket. I'll tell you, Dwayne Sutton, what a terrific play. A little flex action run, and on the flex cut, this is just the last play with the uh, saving it. That first steal was spectacular that he made, and Leaky Black saving a sure bucket or foul or both. But right now, I mean, North Carolina is back on its heels, no pun intended. They, they have been just kind of punched in the chest and knocked back and have not really been able to respond. This is their largest deficit of the game right now, 16 points with 11 minutes to go. Enoch couldn't corral that pass, and it's Carolina ball, and a foul on Enoch, kind of landing on the back of Cameron Johnson. Carolina just 45 points in almost 30 minutes of action. And on the season, Jay, they average 90 points per game. Now, really, the only time this year that North Carolina has been shut off like this was at Michigan, where they could. But Michigan's defense is off the charts good. And, you know, I, I wouldn't put Louisville's defense anywhere near that category. But in this game, Louisville has come out from the opening tap, and they've been the aggressor, both offensively and defensively. A good job by Darius Perry to get up underneath May so he couldn't put the ball in the deck. And now Sutton won't let Johnson get a good look. Shot clock down to five. Kobe White's going to make something happen here. Splits the double team, and then he lost it. And, and White's still hard. down. Boy, Carolina can't get anything going in the half court. And good decision, good patience now as Cunningham sets it up. That was the last time you saw North Carolina close to getting a... Uh, 30-second shot clock violation. 
Leaky Black the foul and let's see what happened to Kobe White as it looks like he's holding on to his right wrist and he's going to come out of the game. Lost it, lost Ooh. the ball and then got tangled up a little bit. His leg got tangled up on Stephen Enoch. And yeah, you can see when he landed right on that left wrist it looked like. And he went down hard. I mean, that could have been really bad in a number of different ways. Hopefully he's okay. Woods takes his place as Cunningham knocks down the free throw. Well, when was the last time you felt like Louisville had any real game pressure on him? When hey, you know, if you make a mistake, if you turn it over, you know, you're kind of letting Carolina back. It, it's been a long time. I mean, maybe late in the first half, but they're in control of this game right now. And they have totally taken the crowd out of the game. But it's been half court basketball. The only team in transition in this game has been Louisville. North Carolina's had nothing in the full court. Black no rebound Enoch good defense. I think that was Sutton again contesting that shot. Yeah I think the player of the game has been Dwayne Sutton. Good fake. Perry no long rebound down to Robinson. Ahead to Black too far and Carolina gives it right back to the Cardinals. That is 14 North Carolina turnovers. It has been one of those days for Roy Williams and his North Carolina team. But give credit to Louisville. Because man Louisville has come into this game. I mean they came ready to fight. They did not go to Pittsburgh that way. And I don't know whether maybe some of what they believed Pittsburgh was last year would be duplicated this year. That, that Pittsburgh team is gone. This one can play. It's not a great team, but it's a, it's a good team. McMahon keeps the dribble alive. Great find out to Sutton. And Enoch fouled by May. And Luke May, and he knew it, he prevented a dunk by committing that foul, his third. Carolina's so small right now. I mean, the biggest guy on the floor for North Carolina really is Cam Johnson. He's, I think he's taller a little bit than Luke May. But Stephen Enoch, just bigger, stronger, and was able to carve out that position. He's, Carolina's probably fortunate this isn't a three-point play. Very good free throw shooter for a big man as well. Why for a big man? He's right. just a good free throw shooter. You're a very good analyst for a big man. <laughs> Sports Center tonight at 11 o'clock Eastern Time with John Anderson and Kenny Mayne. They'll have Colts Chiefs postgame coverage plus a Cowboys Rams breakdown. A look at a busy day in college basketball and all of the highlights from the Spurs and Thunder as they face off again. This discrimination against tall people is really <laughs> disgusting. You're an anti-height. I'm sorry. Hey, Greenberg called you deplorable today. I haven't stooped to those depths. Yeah, I'll, I'll define that word for him later. <laughs> May with a long two. And Enoch just doing anything he wants right now around the rim at both ends. Yeah, this is the best game I've seen Stephen Enoch play in a Louisville uniform. He's been fantastic. And a little miscommunication, an errant pass on the pick and roll. Even if he caught it, he had nothing but white shirts around him. Just a, a bad read. And Enoch really earned this rest 14 and 7 at Pitt 14 and 8 already here today for Enoch well, Darius Perry made a little bit of a mistake there but you know, he needs to shake it off and he's really putting good pressure on the ball but seventh Woods able to get by him it is so hard to put pressure on the ball and stay in front of some of these ultra quick guards that's why when you see Got to get it off the sideline. That's why when you see a guy like Trey Jones at Duke, who I mean, I've not seen anybody better, maybe you have, of putting pressure on the ball and staying in front and, and vision off the ball and moving as the ball moves. He, I, I feel like he's been the best defender in the country to this point. 17-point lead for Louisville, and, and he's the guy, you know, Zion's getting all the headlines, and R.J. Barrett, better than 20 points per game. But Trey Jones, in many ways, is the guy who he just – Keeps the machine going right now for Duke when they're playing. Well. Most important player on the team. And, you know, like, there are a bunch of teams, I think, I shouldn't say a bunch, there are several teams that I think have the capability of beating Duke. 
you know, Duke doesn't shoot free throws particularly well. They're last in the ACC, 67%. They're not a great three-point shooting team. But I think they're the best defensive team. Uh, uh, Duke and Virginia, best defensive teams. Duke does it differently. They're out in passing lanes. They block a ton of shots. And they lead the ACC in steals and block shots. I mean, not a lot of teams are going to be doing that. Remember, this is just game one of a great day of college basketball on ESPN. Duke, Florida State coming up next. Later on, you can see Kansas in action. Later on, you can see Tennessee in action. If you haven't seen Tennessee, you've got to see Tennessee. You want to talk about a tough team with grown men on it. Uh, Tennessee, Rick Barnes' group is as good as it gets right now. North Carolina today, not as good as it gets for Roy Williams. Yeah, they're 2-0 in the league. They're down by 19 on their home court right now. Roy Williams searching for answers. And Adnan packed a lot of information, a lot of important information into that last 10 seconds. Uh, R.J. Barrett almost 23 points per game. Zion Williamson almost 21 points per game. Duke at Florida State right after us here on ESPN. By Florida State, Leonard Hamilton has athletes again, and they are defending at a high level. I mean, that's going to be a that's going to be a terrific basketball game in Tallahassee. Boy, how good has Stephen Enoch been in this game? It's turnover. Unless that ball was knocked away, that's shouldn't that be over and back? It must have been tipped. Because the ball, the ball, Kristen Cunningham had that ball across half court. And I thought from my seat he mishandled it and it didn't get knocked away unless it was touched. So ball and body completely across half court. He just mishandled this thing. Nobody touched that. Yep. That was over and back, and he was the well, maybe, maybe Luke May was the first to touch it in the backcourt. Carolina's going to get it anyway on the possession arrow with seven and a half minutes to go down by 19. The fewest points they've scored in a game this year, 67. They're at only 47 right now. Luke May's got seven. Cameron Johnson's got seven. Kobe White's only got two. Their high score is Kenny Williams, who's got a dozen. And it has been in large measure because North Carolina's been taken completely out of transition. Kobe White, after taking that fall, has got a little wrap around that right wrist. But there's been no easy baskets in transition for North Carolina. Very few. The only one I can remember is that offensive rebound bucket by Kenny Williams. Other than that, very few second chance points. And everything has been five on five in the half court. And you wondered, looking at Roy Williams right now, we have seen bouts from time to time. He just went down to a knee, took a glass of water, and sat down, and hopefully it's not, but we have seen bouts of vertigo over the years on a number of occasions for Roy Williams. Hopefully, you know, maybe just a little dizzy for a moment, but something to keep an eye on and hoping it's nothing serious at all for Coach Williams. North Carolina coming with traps, trying to get some steals, but handled very well and reversed to a wide-open Jordan Wara. And War uh, Williams back up on his feet right now as Robinson knocks down a three, so... Roy looks okay right now, and hopefully that'll be the case going the rest of the way. Right now for Louisville, it's just being strong with the ball. And if there is a trap, and there's basically a trap, you're bringing a trap with a ball screen. They're trapping off everything. Good pass. My goodness. And Enoch with two more. He's got 16. They are just cutting up North Carolina. Woods. Follows up his own miss, can't get it to go, and we got a foul going against Carolina. This is a heck of a catch by Stephen Enoch. Underneath, it was a terrific pass. But off of the different traps, Dwayne Sutton getting it in, and a terrific left-hand little jump hook. And, and Stephen Enoch right now, that's 16 points, nine rebounds, he's got a steal, and I still think the player of the game for Louisville's been Dwayne Sutton. Sutton's got 13 points, Nine rebounds, five assists, and four steals. And on the uh, up to seven assists, they, they're crediting him seven now with assists. seven. So he's had two since the last break. I mean, that is yeah. the, the only category he hasn't scratched in is turnovers. <laughs> he doesn't have a turnover. Yeah. And now a trio of Tar Heels checking back in, including Kobe White. White falling hard a few minutes ago and has a wrap around his right wrist right now. And as you said, actually looked like he braced his fall initially with the left wrist, but then the right one came around and he kind of inadvertently slapped the court hard, but he's back in the game. 
Right now, if Louisville is strong with the ball, and then if the players without the ball are alert coming to it and making themselves available, you know, they just have to handle the pressure that's coming at them. And North Carolina is going to have to gamble. And you've got to make them pay for gambling. Little off to White, 12 to shoot. Can't throw, there's nobody to throw it inside to. And a bad angle on that pass gives it right back to Louisville. Turnover number 15 committed by the Heels. And you are right on on that angle. I mean, that pass was basically leading the Sear Little out of bounds. Instead of take an extra dribble over, get an angle where you lead him to the basket or lead him into his move. You know, Jay, a question about Louisville as now they call timeout. So I'll ask you the question when we come back. That's a tease. That's what they call in the business, a tease. Wait, I better come up with a better question. Not unprepared for the timeout, a tease. RJ run the floor. It's double the freshman, double the fun. Oh, my. And you can see Zion and RJ and the rest of the Blue Devils right after this game today. It's a sonic blockbuster here on ESPN. Number one Duke is in Tallahassee to take on the 13th ranked Seminoles of Florida State, also available on the ESPN app. And I know that you have to lead with Zion Williamson. I mean, he's the headliner. Most important player on that Duke team is Trey Jones. And if you watch that dude play, man, I have not seen a freshman defend like he defends. It's just next level stuff. Carolina trying to step up the ball pressure, force some turnovers, but a foul is called on Little. Yeah, you can see the frustration right now showing on Kobe White. You know, they thought they had V.J. King, thought he might have walked, but got the foul call, and the frustration showed right away. V.J. King, a starter last year, former McDonald's All-American, the only returning starter for Louisville. The other four moved on, either through graduation or early entry. And King started the first five games of this year, now coming off the bench. That's his first point of the day. Uh, a guy who is not playing as much as he did last year, about 17 minutes per game. So talented, but again, trying to just find out where he fits in right now on this new-look Louisville team. Yeah, he's been struggling with a different system. and. You know, like a lot of players, he's he's thinking his way through it rather than just reacting. And, you know, oftentimes that comes from, hey, make the easy play. And he's a good player, and he's going to figure it out. Black kicks it back out to Little, and he gets wrapped up in a foul by Sutton. Oh, there you can see the strength of Nasir Little. I mean, Sutton is strong. He went right into his chest and drew that foul. And Sutton having to go down on his arms to keep him from completing the play. Roy Williams has been asked a lot this year. Not has been asked a lot. There have been uh, some members of the fan base who have said, play a little more, play a little more. You know, huge hype, McDonald's All-American and so forth. And Coach Williams has said things like, hey, in all-star games when everybody's out, you know, running and gunning and dunking and stuff like that, this guy's a star because he's got tremendous athletic and physical ability. Defensively, a work in progress, especially off the ball. And the other point that Roy Williams says is, you know, Cam Johnson, the guy who plays kind of the same position as him, he's a pretty good player. So Little's going to have to earn his minutes either behind Johnson or alongside him at another position. Yeah, it's not like he's holding freshman back. I mean, Kobe White is starting. So, you know, I think uh, Coach Williams knows what he's doing. And not every player, Dan, as you well know, comes into college with the same fundamental base. They don't always pick up things at the exact same rate. And just because a guy hadn't, doesn't have it figured out in the first 15 games, I mean, Nasir Little is going to be a great player. Now, whether it happens this year, next year, whatever, he is going to be a great player. Still a guy projected as a you know, top six or seven pick in the NBA draft based on the raw ability and what people saw from him on, in high school and on the AAU circuit. And you wonder what a lot of different players are going to do this year because this is a really weak draft. I mean, strong at the top is Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, John Moran. There, there are a number of good players, but the depth of this draft is just not there. And is that going to make some guys nice, nice cut? Is that going to make some other guys come out early? You know, the ball reversal, that was just a little slice cut. And they either run a screen for a screener or, or stagger. But he was wide open there in the Little. 
Here's a look at the latest ESPN.com mock draft with Zion Williamson 1, R.J. Bear 2, Nasir Little sitting there in the three spot. You talked about John Morant earlier for Murray State. And then Cam Reddish, who I think objectively you could say is not having the kind of season maybe that he expected or we expected. Uh, you know, such a great shooter. But, you know, when you've got Williamson and Barrett on the same team, all of these guys are the best player on every team they've ever been on. And now, you know, sometimes it takes a little while to blend in and find your role. Nice yeah, and the draft isn't about what you're doing now. It's right. about what you're going to do, and they're projecting. But I'm telling you, that John Morant from Murray State, who actually played on the same AAU team as, uh, as Zion Williamson, that must have been fun to watch in warm-ups and in the games. But John Morant is the real thing. I think he's the third best prospect this year. Perry, with nowhere to go, gets bailed out on the deflection. Shot clock at five. Cunningham will force it up, and he gets called for an offensive foul. They're using that off arm to clear out Kobe White. You just wonder right now if North Carolina's got enough time. I mean, they're down 20 with 435 left in regulation. That's a good call by Mike Eads. No question that was an offensive foul. They really didn't need it. All you need to do is just get it off the backboard. They're getting some stops. They're just not getting many scores. 54 points with just four and a half to go. They've only made three threes today in 18 tries, and they've turned it over 15 times. Nothing easy. I mean, basically, there have been no layups for North Carolina. Good look here for Williams. Same play they ran. That was the screen for the screener part. Well, I'm surprised Luke May just didn't put that thing in. Maybe it'll work out for him. Good rebound. Little got the rebound. Johnson gets the loose ball, and he's headed to the line. One of the first times all game we've seen North Carolina on the offensive glass and really exerting themselves on the offensive glass. You know, for the most part, Louisville has rebounded very well. And what's been most impressive is, you know, you come into any game against North Carolina, the first thing you're saying is we've got to take them out of transition. And... You know, Louisville's used their foreman to try to corral uh, the ball so it, it can't be rushed up the court. That's that's helped a little bit. What really helped was getting Kobe White out of the game early. But they played five on five in the half court. I mean, that, that game plan couldn't have been executed any better by Louisville. So Louisville loses at Pittsburgh. Carolina wins easily at Pittsburgh. And now here's Louisville up 19 at Carolina. All of that in the last 10 days or so. Yeah, you got to gotta play every game, man. You don't get any brownie no. points for what you just did. And out of bounds to the heels when we come back. Under four minutes to play, Louisville continues to be in control at an eerily silent Dean Dome. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy Shots. Get back to 100%. All right, Adnan, thank you. Yeah, under four minutes to go here. Duke and Florida State on deck. And here Louisville in control almost the entire afternoon. Up 19 points with just 340 to go. May misses the three. That's been one of the stories of the game. Carolina can't knock down threes. Also, Louisville winning the rebounding battle, as you talked about. When you talk Carolina, if you want to beat Carolina, you got to keep them out of transition. you got to keep them off the offensive glass. Check, check for Chris Maxton. Yeah, Louisville's done everything right in this game. And I think the player of the game has been Dwayne Sutton. You know, Jordan Mora, that's his 17th point off that three is now five of eight from three-point range but nobody's been better than Dwayne Sutton in this one 13 points nine rebounds seven assists four steals his defense on Cam Johnson has been terrific he, he has been truly outstanding in this game and Stephen Enoch a close second for player of the game Louisville. what has he got 17 points and 11 rebounds 17 points a career high for Enoch Louisville's never won in this building haven't played here very much just 0 oh, and 3 all time 5 and 13 in the all time series history wherever the games have been played I think most importantly for Louisville is they can turn the page on the loss at Pittsburgh they would go to 2 and 1 in the league they pick up a big road win and they'd feel pretty good about themselves heading back home after this one and they get a big win on the road for the NCAA for NCAA tournament consideration I mean Louisville I think Louisville is going to be an NCAA tournament team there's obviously a long way to go but this, this goes a long way for Louisville. 
White at the line now for the Heels. Look at that. The largest ever margin of defeat here for Roy Williams at Carolina was 16. They're down 19 right now. That's amazing. And I can't remember a time where North Carolina has been held to under 60 at this point in the game unless they were playing against Virginia. Yeah, I think it's Virginia. That, that's the only time I can think of such a thing. So trying to keep some pressure on the ball and force some turnovers, but Louisville, by and large, has done a really nice job taking care of the ball today. And that guy, Cunningham, a big reason why. Got some experienced guards out on the floor right now. And guys that can knock free throws down, especially this guy. McMahon turns it over. Johnson has it knocked away. It winds up in the hands of Little and then out of bounds. Stephen Enoch, Enoch blocked that thing. And one of the transition opportunities Carolina got has nothing in transition. Zero. Well, stay with us on ESPN News. Duke and Florida State coming up momentarily on ESPN. Let's go back to the studio. And again, here's Adnan Verk. Less than two minutes to go here in Chapel Hill, and the soft touch on the floater for Cunningham makes it a 20-point game again, and what an impressive performance. Chris Mack wanted his team to be the team that worked harder, the team that showed toughness, and they have certainly done that today here in Chapel Hill. North Carolina never threatened Louisville. Never threatened them. I mean, I, it's, it's, this has been absolutely remarkable. Terrific performance by Louisville on the road against a top 10 team in North Carolina. And I think Roy Williams has to be as disappointed as he has ever been with his team's performance. Cunningham will use a timeout. Two of the big reasons. We know War is great. We know Cunningham's great. But you look at what Enoch and Sutton have done, Jay. Huge parts of this win. Well, Dwayne Sutton came into this game averaging just under 10 points per game. He rebounds at a high rate for a guard. Six and a half rebounds per game. But he has been nothing short of spectacular in this one. Steven Enoch, this is the best game he's played in Louisville. And, and I think by far. And it's the best game he's played against a Power 5 opponent. Now here's Dwayne Sutton knocking down the open jumper. Taking the ball to the basket, using that left hand, kissing it off the glass. And his defense has been terrific. That went on to Sear Little when he's been guarding Cam Johnson. Johnson has not been able to breathe. Just at both ends of the floor, rebounding, assists, steals, scoring. Dwayne Sutton has been fantastic. Close to a triple-double yep. in this game. And four steals to boot. And lots of empty blue seats right now here at the Smith Center. The folks have headed home. Tar Heel faithful have packed it in on this one. And the Cardinals really never gave them any reason uh, to believe their Tar Heels could make a comeback. Carolina got it down to seven early in the second half. It was nine at the half. And then in a flash, it was 15, 16, 18, and it's never really been closer than that. I mean, we've done a ton of games here over the years. I've never seen it. I've never seen the crowd bail out early. They've never had reason to. Right. Uh, th this is absolutely a remarkable feeling in this building right now. Just never felt it before. And Notre Dame's here Tuesday, and Mike Bray's probably saying to himself, oh, great. Now, <laughs> now Roy's really going to get into them in the next couple of days, and uh, we're going to have to deal with it. Thanks a lot, yeah. Louisville. <laughs> Look at the difference between their average numbers this year and the numbers today. Well, that tells the whole story. Boy, something strong with the ball, too. He does not give it up easily. Yeah, nobody's kicking sand in his face no. at the beach, huh? You know, back towards the beginning of the year, you knew Jordan Wara was going to take a big step forward this year and be the alpha dog, if you will, on this team. But I think a lot of people wondered, well, what about the supporting cast? Who's the next guy? And I think what we're starting to see is the next guy can be Cunningham, the next guy can be Sutton. And if you throw Enoch into the yes. mix as well, now you're talking about a team with a, a fair number of options. That's a good call, and Malik Williams starting to play better. But Kristen Cunningham is, is such an interesting story. I mean, he grew up in Lexington, Kentucky. His brother Trey was a manager for Louisville basketball, and nobody really recruited 
Kristen Cunningham coming out of high school. He wasn't recruited by any of the Kentucky universities, whether it's University of Kentucky, Louisville, Western Kentucky, you name it. He wound up at Samford because of his relationship with Scott Padgett and Martin Newton, the AD there, and said when he signed, I'm going to make everybody regret this. And now he's back at Louisville and, and playing a huge role right now uh, for the Cardinals. And he played a big role in this one today. Really steadied the ship at the point guard position all game long. Yeah, that was a great find for Chris Mack to solidify that point guard spot. And again, what was considered to be potentially kind of a transitional year, but Louisville hoping it's much more than that in their first year under Chris Mack. The walk-ons are in right now for Carolina. Walker Miller with a slam. Boy, good catch and finish. But how about the story of how Kristen Cunningham wound up there? I mean, Chris Mack was miffed that he couldn't get any grad transfers, so he, he got a list, whether it was Jeff Borzell or Jeff Goodman, whoever's list it was. He just went down the list and started doing research on different guys, and what stuck out was Kristen Cunningham. When he got to the C's on the list, <laughs> that he's, hey, he's from Kentucky, right. brother was at Louisville and all that, and wound up getting an absolute gem uh, in the in the grad transfer market. Sutton with another bucket, and the shot clock turned off. The closing seconds here in Chapel Hill in a thoroughly impressive victory for the Louisville Cardinals. A road win over a top 15 team in conference play. And a lot of long faces on the other side of the court. And they earned this one, Louisville did. This was tap to buzzer. It was all Louisville. And I think it was based upon the attitude they came out with and how hard they played from the opening tap. You know, Chris Mack said it to Chris Mack said it to Maria Taylor at halftime that Louisville was the harder playing team. And he nailed it. And there are very few folks clad in red here in this building, but those who are here, maybe two, three dozen of them, all on their feet and applauding the effort by their Cardinals here today. And no need to put a shot up. Some of the walk-ons have come in for Louisville here in the closing seconds, and it's going to be a pretty fun flight back to Louisville, I would think. What an impressive performance and a big statement within the ACC by the Cardinals as they drub the Tar Heels here in Chapel Hill today. 83-62 for Chris Mack and Louisville over Carolina as both teams are now 2-1 and one in ACC play. Coming up, Duke taking on Florida State over on ESPN. For Jay Billis, Maria Taylor, and our crew, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching, and so long from Chapel Hill. Coach, all right, coach. You came on the road against the 12th best team in the nation, and you beat them by 21. It seemed from start to finish, the game was impressive. What impressed you most? Well, I just thought we were the same team the whole way. You know, I think there are a lot of teams probably go on runs, um, you know, here as well. But to be able to sustain it and give our guys a lot of credit, you know, everybody was putting knives in our defense, and I thought that's where we won the game today. You know, we were able to get consecutive stops, and um, you know, I couldn't be more proud of our group. What was the defensive game plan? Because UNC averages 90 points a game and you hold them to 62. Well, I think everybody everybody has the same game plan. It's just, you know, do your kids uh, execute at a high level? Because you're going to have to. And we probably caught Carolina on a really poor day for them. But, um, you know, for us, it's transition defense, making sure our offense doesn't create stuff for them. And then, you know, got to keep them off the glass. If you can do those two things, you give yourself a chance to win. First top 15 win for Louisville on the road since 2014. How is this a mile marker for your team and the program that you're building right now in year one? It's a good win, but um, I don't know about mile marker because, you know, we saw just on Wednesday, you know, you, you can stub your toe really quickly. And I give all the credit in the world. Pittsburgh played harder than we did, and that's what we did to Carolina today. And this league's a war, and we just have to make sure that our next opponent, we, we, we don't have this uh, lingering uh, excitement about beating a good team in their building. Thanks for your time. Thanks.